What is up friends? What I have here is the carburetor from about a 2003 Yamaha Raptor would not start. I threw a little fuel down the throat hole and it popped right off. So what that tells me is for whatever reason, this carburetor is not getting fuel into the motor. So what we're gonna do today, I wanna real quick show you a very high level way to clean a carburetor. I'm going to be using an ultrasonic cleaner, but you don't have to have one to do this. I really just wanna show you what to look for when you encounter a vehicle that will not start and you think it has something to do with the carburetor, right? The first thing you need to do, get that thing off of the vehicle. You can't work on a carburetor when it's on a dirt bike or a quad or a car or whatever have you. So uh, I did that. You're gonna, uh, on the Yamahas, you're gonna have to remove a plate here. And then you're gonna be able to remove the linkage. Over on this side, your choke goes in there. And then you unscrew from the uh, air box and the engine and you pop the whole thing right out. Now, <clears throat> there's going to be fuel most likely in this carburetor. If you can, capture that fuel. Now the reason we wanna capture this fuel is it's going to give us a hint as to, let's see, is there any left in here? I would have thought there would have been some, but maybe not. Oh, there we go. Now the reason we want to capture this fuel is it's the only hint we have as to why this thing won't start. Now, you guys want to take any guesses as to why this thing won't start. Now, yes, there was some mud in the bottom of this cup, but that's not what gas is supposed to look like. Now, I can't really tell if there's any water in there. Water is heavier than fuel. So if you take your fuel out and you tilt it like this and you see a weird pocket down in this corner, actually you can see a little bit. I don't think it's showing up on the camera, but that's how you would tell if there was fuel in it or water in your fuel. Uh, and I do suspect this had water in it, but also that gas has just gone bad. You know, that's all there is to it. Uh, and there's some sediment in it. So all we need to do is a standard cleaning. So pull your carb off, get the fuel out, Take a gander at her. It's gonna give you your first hint. All right, once that's done, you're gonna strip anything that you don't want going in the ultrasonic cleaner or getting exposed to brake clean. Again, I'm gonna be using an ultrasonic cleaner, but anything I can accomplish with that, you can accomplish with some brake clean. So we're gonna remove these boots. Next thing we're gonna do <clears throat> is pop this bottom piece off. That's where all the goop is really gonna be. If we pop it open like this, maybe we'll be able to retain any goop in there. Not terrible, but I totally see why this thing wasn't starting. All right, now we're not real, real, real varnalized. Varnalized, I definitely just made a word up. Varnicized, varnish. We're getting at varnish here. That's the, the root here. But you can see down in that corner down there, you see that yellow, that amber colored goo. That is the fuel starting to go bad. All right, if you're looking at the bottom of your carburetor here, these are all jets. Uh, this is your float. Your needle and seat are right here. What you're gonna wanna do, highly recommend, unless you are an absolute expert in the carburetors you're dealing with, take a lot of pictures. That's what I like to do, especially if it's a carburetor I've never dealt with before. Just snap a little. All right, now when I go to put this back together, I know what this thing looked like, and that's helpful. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pop out these jets. Now, if any of these jets try to fight you, um, take it easy, you know? You don't wanna, this is all brass. You don't wanna break any of this stuff. See, there might be stuff like this. You're gonna need a uh, six-sided wrench to get out. Now, if you open this up and it's real bad, it looks like the uh, creature from the Black Lagoon in here, you may wanna get a rebuild kit. Rebuild kit is a beautiful thing. It's probably gonna have all new jets. It's gonna have new O-rings. Like this one down here doesn't look great, if I'm being honest. It's a little hard, but we're gonna try it. I was asked to try to clean this without spending any money on it, so let's give that a shot. All right, <clears throat> alrighty, now in here is a set screw. You're gonna wanna measure how many turns in it is. So see what where it's oriented. It's oriented at uh, nine and three o'clock. All right, now it's, now go in. So half, one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, three and three quarters. Write that down. You do not want to forget it. All right. Write it on the side of this guy. Three and three quarters. Yeah, technically a little less than that, but whatever. All right, once you know how far in it was, you can pull it all the way out. All right, 
you can pull these out. This is your float and your needle is right here. Now again, if you haven't done this a lot, you may want to take more pictures. I happen to know where all this stuff goes, so I'm not going crazy, all right? Now there are two types of needles. There are needles that are all metal and then have a rubber seat, and there's, uh, which is a, a, a O-ring essentially that goes at the bottom of that bore to seal against the metal uh, needle, or you have needles like this uh, with a rubber tip, and then they don't need a seat, and the seat likely on these is non-serviceable. Uh, it's usually brass or steel. Uh, so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, like Tecumseh snowblowers have a metal, um, actually I guess all Tecumseh motors damn near, have a metal needle and then you need to replace the seat. Not the case on these Yamaha ones uh, or like a lot of Briggs and Strat and uh, Nikki and, and Walbro carbs. Um, but I digress. All right, every carb is different, <clears throat> but you, you're essentially stripping this carb down, all right? You want as much taken off so that as many internal passages can get cleaned out as possible. When a carburetor isn't operating properly, you, you have one of two issues. Either you're experiencing a situation where some kind of buildup or malfunction is preventing fuel from flowing. That's something like uh, maybe one of your jets is broken or it's just clogged shut and then you have good fuel but it's not moving through it. Another situation is when your, your carburetor becomes fouled up with a non-flammable um, liquid. It's usually water. All right, you get water in your carburetor and now it's trying to pump that into the engine and obviously the engine can't burn the, the, um, the water and your motor just doesn't run. So you wanna be as careful as possible if you're trying to reuse your seals the way I am. There we go. If you encounter anything like this, you see these a lot on two-stroke cube carburetors. Uh, they run on diaphragms. Oh man. Usually you want to replace these, all right? <clears throat> you want, you're going to need to peel it off of there no matter what. If you rip it peeling it off, there's no way around it. You can't fix it. Uh, if you are able to get it off in one piece, you want to examine it. Is it still pliable? Is it still supple? Here, see how I'm able to pop it? And it's not crackling or anything? This one is far from new as it is a little bit stiff. But I think it's still got a little life left in it. We're gonna try. If I'm not mistaken, this is probably some kind of power valve for when you're wide open to enrich <clears throat> the main circuit. Okay, we're gonna remove this stuff up top. Here is uh, essentially your throttle blade. Uh, this is a metering rod, and then this uh, keeps your throat hole closed. Do I want to clean this? I think we're gonna clean this by hand. We're not gonna send it through the ultrasonic cleaner, but you can see it does have some buildup on it uh, of dirt. <clears throat> Just like the throttle body in your vehicle will get dirty with carbon and dirt and dust. So will this thing. So I will clean this on my own. Uh, we're going to put this aside. All right, friends, at this point, we're ready to clean the darn thing. Now, how would you go about cleaning a carburetor like this? You can use something like brake parts cleaner or carbon choke cleaner. Uh, and what you're essentially going to want to do, first, blast off the outside. I usually do that first, but this one wasn't, like, filthy. <clears throat> and then you're just going to clean all the passages. A carburetor is basically a collection of passages, right? You got passages here that bring your fuel in, passages that move fuel around, passage there, passage there, passage there. That's a passage. All right. Down in there is your, um, oh, look here, see the vents and outlets and inlets all over the whole thing. You essentially need to blast carbon choke cleaner through all of those passages, all right? <clears throat> Especially if the fuel you took out of there was looking like that, because that's nasty. All right? <clears throat> uh, you can use compressed air to blow through the passages. You can use pipe cleaners. They sell carburetor cleaning brushes. I've used anything you can imagine. Here, look up here, more passages. Essentially, and all these passages either move fuel or they use a vacuum impulse to send fuel or something. They're all necessary. If one of them is a little bit off, 
uh, your whole carburetor you know may catastrophically not work uh, my point was i've used everything you could imagine to clean these things and i've found that the best thing to use is an ultrasonic cleaner i know everybody doesn't have an ultrasonic cleaner but i think everybody should honestly they're not expensive the one i bought and i got a bigger one than i needed was 200 bucks uh, but you can get one for well under 100. All right, friends, if you choose to go the old-fashioned route with this and clean it with uh, the brake clean and all that, good on you. That's how I do or did my carbs for years. Uh, but today I want to show you this ultrasonic cleaner, man. It's 10 out of 10. What you do is you, like, like we just did, strip our carb down as far as she'll go, darn near, put her in there. I like to put her with the bowl side facing down because that's where the most of your uh, corrosion and whatnot's going to be. So put that guy just like that. Take our uh, float ball down like that, and then they gave you this little T diffuser. You're essentially gonna, whoops, I broke it. You're gonna take this guy, empty all these bits in there. All right, that's every screw, every um, uh, jet, every piece. Put that in there like this. Let's let this thing get heated up. We'll come back once she's warm. Put this guy in and see if she don't clean up right. Beforehand, you can see this piece in particular has got some real gnarly chunks on it. I'm gonna throw the rubber in there, because why not? And all of our little pieces are in here. Halfway through, I'm gonna come over and just flip this. I'm gonna put her in for 30 minutes, no big deal. All right, ready? that one like that and then we'll flip it and do it the other way what do you say sound good all right let's leave this for a half hour like this and we'll flip everything and do another half hour by then it should be up to uh yeah the temperature's dropping fast now with that going in there but should get up to 80 by the end of it there we go friends 30 minutes on the one side 30 minutes on the other we switched it halfway through soup's done and what a stew it is, actually. I've been using this Simple Green for a few months now, and it's finally, that one really did it. There was some grime in there. But look how clean these things come out. Good as new. Yeah, my buddy's gonna love these. All right, let's pull that stuff out of there. All right, friends, uh, pretty warm, but nice and clean, right? You gotta love that. Now, what I do like to do when they come out of there is just wipe them down, because sometimes it doesn't do a great job of carrying all the dirt away. It loosens it, but it doesn't have a mechanism for really sending it so and you'll see even though this looks nice and clean we're getting all that up, so and we're gonna do the same thing here you can see she's pretty good there's a little bit of gunk right there on that plug and again it does a great job of loosening all this stuff it just doesn't really have a mechanism for pulling it away so you just have to go and give it a once over i'm not going to do all the areas because some of this stuff doesn't matter certainly down the throat hole here matters you got to blow air through these because remember i said that it doesn't really have a mechanism for pulling stuff away so you can actually well, i can you can't all those little holes can you see in there are still clogged but you go like this and you're golden. They're all open, you've blown all that stuff out, you can go both ways if you want. But that one is, that's good as no. Same thing here, anything that has holes in it, any, any jets or mixing screws that have holes in them. This is probably your pilot jet right there. And you can go over all this stuff too if you really want. We talked about all those passages before. It's not going to hurt to go ahead and blast each one of them. These passages down here for sure. And there you go, man. Short of uh, reassembly, some assembly required, no big deal. That's how you clean a carburetor. So by all means, if you've got any questions on changing your carburetor, it does not matter if you're doing the carburetor on a 69 Charger or you're doing the carburetor on a Tecumseh Snowblower or a Raptor or a lawnmower or darn near anything. They all look different and they have different functions, different little uh, extra bits you're gonna have in here, but it's the same idea. You know what I mean? You got fuel coming in 
and it's getting routed around and you need to make sure all those routes are clear. So if you have any questions, by all means, let me comment down in the squawk boxes. I'm actually gonna ask you, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to this channel. It's a small channel. I've been working at it for about a year and I've been trying to get it to 1,000 subscribers so that I can monetize it because if I can monetize it, I can do cooler stuff on here. I can buy go-karts and dirt bikes and fix them until right now. I gotta, you know, do stuff that I'm doing as a favor for a buddy or do stuff that I find on the side of the road for free so I can't be stealing from the uh, executive producer's chicken nuggets fund, uh, you know, so that you guys can get cool videos. So if you liked this, by all means, subscribe to the channel. Maybe go check out another one of our videos. Definitely like the video. That's common sense. If you like something, like it. As always, thanks for watching.